from WXII 12 News. This is breaking news. Breaking news takes us to Thomasville tonight. A double homicide, a stolen car, a car crash and a chase and a suspect in custody. We'll check in with our Steve King to see how this all pieces together. But first tonight we're tracking Hurricane Dorian as it grows to a category three storm and gets closer to Florida. President Trump has approved Florida's state of emergency mm -hmm. declaration, meaning that federal groups can now work together to bring in help and supplies. The hurricane is expected to hit land as a major category four storm. You can understand why so many people are concerned about this, including our meteorologist Michelle Kennedy. She's been tracking the storm to see what, if any, Thing could come our way. Michelle? Well, unfortunately, as it becomes a Category 4 impacting Florida first, it will likely take a turn to the north. So it will likely impact us somewhere along the North Carolina coast or possibly inland. Still too soon to tell how much of an impact we'll have. We know that Category 4 Hurricane uh, Dorian is expected. Right now it's a Category 3 hurricane as of a 5 o'clock statistics and data that's coming in from our Hurricane Hunters flight. They've just been doing some path flights and we've been able to see that some of those gusts at the surface sustained at about 204 miles an hour. So we know the intensification is happening and we'll see this likely become a category four by tomorrow. One of the forecast models suggesting that this storm could roll either inland between West Palm Beach area up through Daytona Beach or Orlando or just sit along the coast. This forecast model, of course, just one of many trying to determine the best placement for where this system is going to impact the most folks. And we're seeing here a turn that could take it all the way up to the coastline of North Carolina, South Carolina near Charleston by next Thursday. Notice it's still off coast, still gaining some strength or at least able to maintain as possibly a tropical storm or hurricane at that point. It does move into some cooler waters. Our water temperatures are dropping into the lower 80s. If it is off the coast at all and able to maintain some hurricane or tropical storm strength at this point, it would impact folks from Wilmington north through the Outer Banks and possibly inland with some scattered showers and storms. And of course, if it is farther to the west, all bets are off. It could be more rain for us, but a lot of changes are going to happen here. We'll have much more for you and talk more about Category 3 Hurricane Dorian and what will happen for us coming up. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Well, right now it's calm, beautiful Friday on the Florida coast, but the governor there is telling people to prepare for the worst case scenario. Every single county in Florida is under an emergency watch right now. Grocery stores are running out of supplies and some gas stations are already run out of fuel. No evacuations in place as of yet, but the governor's asking people to prepare a bag to be able to get out and get out quickly if needed. Floridians need to be prepared. Uh, you know, the, the bad news of the storm going slower is that that could uh, potentially have some, some negative impacts once it reaches landfall, uh, but you do have time before it reaches uh, to prepare if you have not done so. A lot of people are reconsidering their vacation plans to Florida because of this hurricane. Several major airlines are waiving flight change fees for flights going through specific airports in Florida, and you should check the theme park hurricane policies as well. If you've got something planned, some do allow you to cancel your vacation for no charge and get your money back. As of right now, though, there aren't any theme park closures. A lot of people are leaving Florida or canceling trips that were planned for this Labor Day weekend. Some people from our area are actually headed south on purpose. Most of them are volunteers with the Red Cross deployed today to help during and after the storm. Our Kirsten Gutierrez met up with a few of them at Piedmont Triad International Airport in Greensboro. Red Cross volunteers are flying out of PTI to help their neighbors hundreds of miles away. Rusty Buff and Don Prelick packed their bags and are on their way to Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, we'll be working at shelters, um, trying to uh, provide a place for people to have a place to sleep, to provide them with food, and hopefully with compassion and comfort. Prelick says volunteers from across our state will either be stationed with them in Tallahassee or sent to Orlando or West Palm Beach. And running through my mind is hoping that is not as bad as Francis was. Francis was a brutal, brutal experience. Um, so I'm hoping that this is uh, going to be a somewhat less. While hoping for the best, both volunteers are preparing for the worst. There are bad disasters and good disasters. And somebody may look at me strange, how could a disaster be good? And I'll tell you, a disaster is good when you see how the community comes out and helps out to see people coming in and donating all these goods and services. Uh, it's just what a wonderful experience that is to see how uh, people can actually pour out their hearts, open up their wallets and help 
their enablers. Prelick says it's his passion to help others, and he hopes more people will follow. These volunteers will stay in Florida for at least two weeks or longer if needed. In Greensboro, Kirsten Gutierrez, WXI 12 News. Kirsten, thank you. A Red Cross volunteer from Graham is in Florida right now. Her name is Cindy Rutledge. She's going to be there setting up and managing shelters in and around Orlando. You can stay up to date on every move Hurricane Dorian makes and all the storms in the tropics just by sticking with us on WXI 12. You can download our app inside your app store and follow our page on Facebook. We'll send you notifications and alerts from our meteorologists. They'll also be live on Facebook when the new track for this storm comes out. Let's get back to that breaking news now at a Thomasville. We're learning quite a bit more about a double homicide and the suspect who's now in custody there after a chase and a crash. There's a lot going on with this situation. We know four people have gotten hurt. Let's get to our Steve King live from the Thomasville Police Department with more on this developing situation. Steve, what can you tell us? That suspect is 26 year old Ernest Bethel, who investigators say is wanted for a double homicide in Richland County, South Carolina. Now, police in South Carolina say that he shot and killed two people and injured two others at a restaurant in Columbia about eight days ago. Police say Bethel stole a car in Rowan County and was spotted by Thomasville officers around two this afternoon on I-85 northbound. Officers say Bethel tried to speed away, getting off of I-85 on exit 103, making a right onto Randolph Street, losing control and crashing into three cars. Detectives say he ran away on foot, but officers caught him nearby. Four people, including a child, were in the vehicles involved in the crash. They're all expected to recover from their injuries. Now, Bethel has been taken to the Davidson County Jail awaiting extradition to South Carolina. Randolph Street at I-85 was blocked off on the northbound lanes for about an hour and a half, but has since cleared up. As we learn more, we will be sure to bring more updates. But for now, reporting live in Thomasville, Steve King, WXII 12 News. Steve, thank you. A situation involving a barricade in High Point is over, but it lasted for several hours earlier today. Police say around 1015 this morning, a woman called 911 saying her husband had cut her. When officers arrived at the home on Triangle Lake Road, they say Lee Ingram was standing in the doorway holding a gun. They tried to contact him, but they say they couldn't. About three hours later, police went into the home and found Ingram dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Triangle Lake Montessori School was put on lockdown during the situation as a precaution. The woman who initially called police went to the hospital with several stab wounds. The body of an 18-year-old found in a Greensboro yard this morning, and now police are investigating the death of Jalen Harris as a homicide. Officers say two people called 911 overnight about hearing gunshots. Police are asking anyone who has information to call Crime Stoppers. A Davidson County man is accused of sexually assaulting a child in Randolph County. The sheriff's office says Paul Ellison is now facing charges after a forensic interview of the child and detective interviews with family members who say they knew the suspect. Ellison is being held on $25,000 bond. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office is looking for a missing teenager who may be in danger. Deputies say Samuel Jurgen is 15. He's a white male with brown hair and he's about six foot two. The Sheriff's Office says he was last known to be in the area of Lake Brant Road near Scales Road on Wednesday night. Deputies are asking anyone who has information about where he may be to call them at the number on your screen. Dale Earnhardt Jr. says he is ready to race this weekend. It's been a little more than two weeks since the former NASCAR driver, his wife and their daughter were involved in a fiery plane crash in Tennessee. Today, the first time Jr. has spoken publicly on camera about the wreck and everything that's happened since. You know, it, it was a very scary experience and, um, you know, we're just we're just happy to be healthy and and to have our, you know, have have a weekend like this to look forward to and um, you know, just try to get back to doing my job as a broadcaster and working with NBC and all the things that, you know, we're excited about and happy about in our lives, uh, ready to focus on all those things. Earnhardt Jr. will race in tomorrow's Xfinity Series at Darlington Raceway. Ford Business 40 is back open. You can drive all the way down Main Street and then used to have to get off of Business 40 at Highway 52. This means you can now get to the heart of downtown Winston-Salem while driving on 40, but on the ramps to Business 40 from Highway 52 and MLK will still be closed. They won't open that until the entire project is complete. The DOT engineers say this is going to help traffic in other areas of the city. It will save some frustration as, as it should relieve some of the other routes that motorists are taking, such as Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Fifth Street, and some other side streets 
that the motorists are taking to access downtown, so this will provide some relief. This 40 project's designed to make the highway safer, and it's expected to wrap up next summer. To stay up to date on everything with the Business 40 project, download our app in the App Store. Just search WXII.